I've got some 12 volt DC power supplies from an eBay seller um, in the U based in the UK, which doesn't mean anything. And uh, they're the type that have that put out 12 volts DC are regulated on the voltage side, and the 18 watt one puts out one and a half amps. The 12 watt one puts out one amp. And then this slightly dubious looking um, 6 watt one puts out half an amp. Now this case that it's using is very similar to the little generic cases they seem to use for just about everything. It's the same sort of style uh, that uh, is copied widely amongst manufacturers. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, open one of them. Let's open, I'll, I'll open one of them, and if you guys want me to open the others, then just let me know in the comments and uh, I'll open them too. But uh, let's take a look in the big one and see what, what quality it's like. So... Stainless steel screws, interesting. This cover um, acts as the, not just the cover of the electrical connections, but it also grips the cable. And uh, I think it holds a case together. Yeah, because the bit that it screws into actually holds the, the bottom one. Is this going to come off easily? No, it's clipped on. I can see the slight indentations in the side, so let's um, unclip it. Oh, interesting. So, really quite impressive isolation between the two sides. The closest point it comes is the opto-isolator and the little uh, capacitor that's used for interference suppression. I'll hold that up closer so you can see it. Pretty wide isolation. And at the point it does come close, they've got an anti-tracking slot as well, which is good. Um... Mm, there's some surface mount components in the bottom, but not an awful lot. It's got an NTC inrush limiting thermistor there. Uh, it's got an inline fuse. First thing it hits is a suppression, uh, a, a BDR, metal, metal oxide varistor, um, voltage dependent resistor, metal oxide varistor, VDR, same thing really. Um, then it's got the suppression capacitor, the inrush limiter, and it's got a choke, which is feeding from the middle connection of the mains in the neutral to the so it's in series with the uh, before it goes to the rectifier. Comes out the rectifier and goes straight to these two capacitors, which are paralleled. And the circuitry in there seems to be based around a dedicated chip. Let's see if I can see what the chip is. I'm going to use my phone this time because. Uh, it's got a magnifying function. There's an application for Android called Swiss Army Knife, and it's very simple, and it just comes with a suite of applications for your phone. Like, for instance, flashlight, unit converter, timer. But here, the magnifying glass is one of the most useful. And one of the nicest things about this uh, free app is that it doesn't need any permissions at all, um, which is great. It's, it's very simple, it's fast, it's fairly secure. So here we go. Magnifying glass. Let's see if you can actually share this experience here of... So that chip is a DMO365R. DMO365R. Let's uh, see if I can find a data sheet on that, because that's a standard switching converter. Oh, this will do. It's a 
based on the, if it's not an actual Fairchild, it, it's based on the Fairchild uh, Greenwood uh, power switch, which is just a dedicated switching inverter chip, uh, which keeps the number of components down to the minimum. And that's the block diagram inside. The data sheet's online there. If you, if you do a, a search for that number, the uh, DMO365R, uh, you'll find it. Uh, it's quite an interesting chip. It is designed to operate with um, opti-isolated feedback from the secondary side. And there are things worthy of note is that um, it's a minimal number of components. It's got a little snubber net, three component snubber across the primary coil. It's got th there are three windings on the transformer. One is the main primary winding, <coughs> which is switched by a, a transistor inside the chip itself. The other winding that, that you'd expect is the secondary, which is simple enough, but there's also a second secondary which is designed to supply power to this chip. And what actually happens, uh, now let's see if I can actually spot that. I would guess that it's going to be this diode and maybe this capacitor. And the whole, what actually happens is when you turn the chip on, if this is the power supply capacitor for the chip, it'll start trickle charging it through the chip from the main side. And as soon as there's enough charge on the chip, it'll burst into life, it'll start driving the transformer. And at that point, if everything's going to plan, the output from the second secondary, the one that's dedicated to the drive chip, will start charging this capacitor directly via this diode, and it'll power it itself, and it doesn't need the, the original mains drive supply again. It's quite a common arrangement. What can happen is if something is faulty, nothing's going to plan, uh, you can get situations where it will pulse on and off continually, um, trying to kick-start the, the circuit, but maybe the, something's wrong with the... Maybe the capacitors have dried or maybe the uh, output's shorted, and that's why you often get that pulsing effect. So there we go, that's quite uh, interesting that it uses those chips. It seems to have a very heavy secondary winding here. I'm not sure if that's just sleeving or if it's actually the winding. It would be nice if it was the winding, but I'm not 100% sure if it is. I'd have to actually start slicing to the transformer. I can see a fairly heavy core coming out the other side here, but um, I'm not sure if that's actually tied into that sleeve knife. Oh, I didn't want to do this, but hey, what the heck. I don't want to start slicing this up too much. In case I wreck it. I probably have wrecked it already, but hey. I'd rather actually know what's in these before actually using them. Quite a lot of tape in there. I'll try not to cut through to the scrunchy bits. Oh, I think I have already cut through to the scrunchy bits. Hmm. Okay, that's not telling me an awful lot. I think those windings may actually be... This may be the secondary winding. I've actually cut that. Because I can see... Oh, well, that might actually just be a splice between two windings. I think it is, actually. Hmm. Okay. So this may actually be a, a solid uh, insulation going into an inner winding. Uh, the primary may be wound on the very inside, and then there'd be a secondary wound on the outside to actually drive this chip. So maybe the if that is wound with... Um, if I've knackered this, I will actually uh, take the transformer out completely the, and strip it to bits. I'd like to see if this is the insulation in the secondary, because if that is the case, that does count as good secondary insulation. I'm quite happy with something like that, because it's a tough Kynar-style sort of, um, or teflon style sleeving to provide insulation against a transformer failing. But anyway, it comes out of there. One connection goes straight to this capacitor the negative of the capacitor, and the other one goes to this cluster of four diodes in parallel with a filter capacitor across them and a, a capacitor and resistor, a little snubber across the diodes to prevent the noise, transmission of the diode noise. 
because when the diodes turn on, uh, when it reaches the transition voltage of the diode turning on it, it does create quite a sharp transient. Um, the output from those diodes goes to Is that going straight? That's going to this capacitor here. Then there's a choke. Which is feeding the next capacitor. So that's just a bit of filtering. The two cap capacitors, two negatives are common. The diodes are feeding the, this positive connection. Then there's a choke to the other positive of the other capacitor. So that is just filtering. Then the feedback to the opto-isolator is sometimes just a zener, but that's not in this case, it's a wee chip. I can read that, which is quite impressive. TL431K. I don't know if I... No, I don't know if you'll be able to actually read that little chip there. If I lift this up, I need more. And it should have a bit more lighting up here, in fact. OK, that's a, that's a generic um, <coughs> volt a threshold detector voltage. It's a programmable voltage threshold detector. I don't know if I'll have... I think that's another Fairchild chip, but it's copied left, right and centre. Uh, here's, here's a similar one. This is a, a generic BCD semiconductor manufacturing, which is the they sort of rip off the numbering and just adapt it a little bit. You can call it a 431 generically, uh, a 431. And it's basically, it's a little uh, <coughs> sort of almost like regulator or threshold detector that uh, it's got an internal reference voltage and then you put a resistor bridge between the positive and uh, negative of the output and as soon as it reaches a threshold that matches that reference, it'll turn on quite accurately. And that will then drive this opto-isolator, which on that side will have... It's all done, surface mount. Uh, there's a little um, resistor across the opto-isolator's LED, uh, just to probably to speed up the transition of turning on and off. And there's a little series resistor uh, for the opto isolator, and then the other end is going straight to that regular that uh, little uh, threshold detector to pull pull it down. So that's quite interesting. It's quite you know that's quite well made inside. I'm almost tempted to check out this uh, wiring, strip that transformer to bits. It's a uh, slight annoying because it wasn't a cheapish unit. I mean, it was cheap compared to what they used to cost, but. Um, not super cheap. Uh, that is quite odd. It's just obviously... I wonder if they've just actually done a wee pudge on... Oh, that may be a, a mm, virtual centre tap. I'm not 100% sure. I, I would have thought they'd have taken that down to the pins down below. I don't see it. Uh, I don't see that I've actually um, cut through anything yet. Yet. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, that's quite promising, actually. Uh, it's quite good if the, these these are uh, good thick insulation in the windings. They can really do that because it's also quite a high current winding as well. Yeah, that's that's quite a neat little power supply. That's pretty good. But if you guys want to want me to take, I don't want to start putting up loads of videos just doing virtually the same thing. But uh, if you want me to take these ones to bits, I I will take them to bits and uh, show you what's inside them.